Hi there guys and welcome back to episode 15 of Once Upon a Time in Blackpool and as you can see on screen we are maintaining a wonderful run of form in League One. Our unbeaten record is now five matches in a row without losing and as you can see that does mean the game we've had since last time Gillingham we won by two goals to nil. We'll quickly get the goal rush out of the way here. It was a comprehensive performance again honestly like the quality of our play now is really becoming something to behold. The passing, the knowledge of the players have, the communication, you know, that connection they're building and understanding is really starting to show. Some of the football I thought was Premier League at times. And look at this for the first goal. Virtue comes inside. You could tell he's been learning off Herbie Kane, can't you? It was unbelievable. It was a Gareth Bale run and strike. And then Virtue unselfishly sets up Sonny Kai Kai in the second half to make the full-time score 2-0. Once again, we had so many more chances than that, as you can see. A lot of possession. Managed to rest a few players, bearing in mind we got Middlesbrough in the FA Cup uh, today. So that's a massive game. So yeah, wonderful stuff. We'll just go to the League One table here. And 30 games down out of 46, 16 to go, and we are romping. We are nine points clear of second and third. So this is really looking like we could get promotion this year. But now, anyway, let's move on to something else, which is transfers, because we have had some more business happen, and we knew it was going to happen. Now the window is open. We haven't got long to go, probably about a week. So take you to the transfer, the transfer history. There's some offers in. I'm just going to do it by date, as you can see here. And as you can see, we've had Frederick Nilsson has left on loan to Randers. We talked about it earlier on in the save. We looked at him and said he was developing well training with the first team. But I wouldn't mind getting him some first team football. He's got a good loan move to Randers FC in Denmark, who are a decent, I believe, first division team. Yeah, in the Superliga. Um, looking like he's going to be a key player for them as well, which is what we want to get him some exposure. And hopefully he'll come back a really exciting prospect next season. Let's see if some of these stats can creep up a bit so that's a good move and we have gone abroad again back to Portugal I believe yep in the Liga Pro which is the second division we have bought a guy called Wari Suarez from Mafia Mafia from the Mafia for £10,000 as you can see he is 26 years old he's on a backup contract for three years 2000 a week but his stats are very decent his potential ability despite being 26 and still go up as well he's even got good flair for a centre back really 14 marking passing tackling all where you need him to be he's a ball playing defender gets the number 33 shirt at the end of the season I'm going to find his name in Possible to pronounce Wari Suarez. There we go. I'm just going to say it really quickly as if it's like a slur. But there we go. He's come in. And once again, like I said, we still got more business we're looking to do. Still looking to bring in another centre half to go in alongside these guys because obviously we've moved on um, Edwards as well. So we need one more. Wari Suarez will come in, learn a bit of English as well to team up with these boys. And we get one more in, I think. We might be right. We've got Faber as well, which I forget. But we'll see anyway what happens there. I'm just going to quickly deselect this team so we're getting ready for the Mills Brigade. So yeah, another centre half is something we're looking at, and we need to look up front, I think, as well. Um, Delfonso, we've been lucky that he's not had an injury this season. Hardy, as you can see, has yet to score in 17 appearances this season. Um, not good. I'm not sure what his stats are looking like. Staying the same. Um, I still think we're going to stick with him. I'm not going to throw him under the bus as such yet, because he's still got time. Um, but we need to go find probably another striker. And obviously we've got Leco for the hole. Let's look at the wings as well, because we're going to be losing Kent and Kaputska and probably Palmer at the end of the season. So we need to do a little bit more work thinking ahead as well. And we do have two players who are joining us in the summer, but I won't tell you about them until the end of the window. We'll get this window out of the way first, and then we'll summarise what's going to happen in the next stage. Right, we're on the eve of the Middlesbrough game, and it's not such good news, to be frank. Matthew Virtue, he's really come into his own the last four or five games. He's forced Herbie Kane out of the team, which you think at the start of the season, how was that even possible? He is out for three to six months with quite a nasty hip injury. I'm going to send him to the specialist. I think he deserves that. He deserves the best care here. I'm going to talk to him about that injury. Uh, it's very disappointing. He was going to start his FA Cup game over Herbie Kane. He'd earned that opportunity. Don't worry about your injury. Yeah, and he's, he's okay. Um, that's such a shame. He's 21 years old. What a season he's had as well. I think he's had five assists and five goals in like 15 appearances. He's doing wonderful from that position. Look at these stats to him. So yeah, um, very bad news for her, for uh, Matthew Virtue there, who will miss the Middlesbrough game now. And also Leleko is going to miss it, and I wanted to start him as well. Um, so yeah, he's got a tight grind out for two to three days. So we're going to have to make some last-minute changes here to the team for the Middlesbrough game. 
um, Virtue will have to drop out for Herbie Kane now, who comes back in. Um, and Leco. Oh, Leco was only on the bench, actually. I, oh, I got for Kent in the hole. Well, I made a mistake there, hadn't I? Right, that could have gone quite badly wrong. Um, I did want to play Leco in the hole. I'm going to go for Kaputska. Just a little switcheroo. Virtue off for Michael Nottingham. And you might see that at the bottom. I've got a new signing I've not actually told you about as well. I just realised we haven't got to it yet because it just happened. Kenji Gore has joined us. Yes, welcome to our third signing of the transfer window. He has come in for £25,000 from Nacional de Madeira. I can't even pronounce that. De Madeira, it's like the cake, isn't it? Oh my God, Tom, you've got to sort your voice out, mate. Just quickly before the Middlesbrough game as well in the FA Cup, we have confirmed a new signing. He's currently out of a car strain for about three weeks, which is a bit of an inconvenience. But we have gone for Kenji Gore, who is someone who's got a bit of an English history. He started off as a Man United youngster, went to Swansea, didn't do anything. And with great respect, hasn't really done a lot at all. But he's one of those, when you look at his stats, he's quite an interesting player. There's this, his mentals are terrible, but he's got flair, he's got dribbling, he's got finishing, he's got physicals. So I was like, do you know what? We'll give him a punt. He's on a three-year deal, 2,400 a week, 24 years old. It's a sort of Riyad Mahrez signing. It's kind of like you make it or break it now. Um, he obviously is injured at the moment, so he won't be able to feature. But, yeah, interesting times to bring him in here. And, um, yeah, I think it's encouraging, you know. The only downside we have got is it doesn't mean I'm currently overspent on wages, but I have got a few other moves in here, as you can see, which we'll come back to look at later on. Right, and here we go. FA Cup fourth round there, Bloomfield Road. And we have gone very strong, but I've also gone slightly controversial. Anik, Turton, Wari Suarez is in for his first start for Blackpool. Uh, I'm not sure he even knows the language, but we'll see how that goes. Prochenko has got a suspension, so we can't do a lot about that. Tilton Anderson comes in at left back because Boller is still carrying a slight knock. Kaki spearing. Herbie Kane comes in after the sad injury to Matthew Virtue. Um, Ryan Kent, Kaputsko and Alfonso, one of the strongest teams we can go for. I would say Middlesbrough are running a bit scared here with their formation. They've not had a good season, but look at the players. Randolph, Jamat, uh, Fry, Shotton, Friend, Clayton, Housen and Saville. And a striking free of Tavener, Asombalonga and Rudy Jested. Right, dressing room. I think we are expected to prove a point today. Do you know what I mean? Because Middlesbrough have only won three games all season. I'm going to tell them... This is a great opportunity to show all the pundits that you, they've been right to back you. We'll end the team talk. The players are itching here in the FA Cup. It's a different sort of challenge today. Jack Robinson's a good player. And Prichenko is going to be felt. Yeah, we look good in training, but we'll go. And we're underway. Can we get to the FA Cup fifth round as a League One side? That would be unbelievable. It's, Herbie. it's a penalty. 20 seconds in. I was just warming up with the intro for the game. And Blackpool are awarded the spot kick. Ryan Kent came charging into the box. Middlesbrough's luck goes from bad to worse this season. It's spearing from the spot. It's 1-0 Blackpool in the first minute here in the FA Cup. Ryan Kent's searing run. A terrible, terrible crunching tackle. I didn't even see it. It was actually. It happened so quick. But we've gone 1-0 up here. It was it was Howson. He just caught him. I can't believe it. I'm completely stunned. I thought it would probably be like any other game. 0-0 till half time. Right. Ball in now. Blackpool here looking to really make a statement against Middlesbrough here. Kane up to Kent. Kent with the strike. Comes off to Alfonso, unfortunately. Saville trying to get it clear now. Tavener, great run there to try and kill the game. They have got quality. Spearing comes across now. Housen trying to make amends for giving away the penalty early doors. Middlesbrough now looking forward here. Asomba Longa into Rudy Jested. Good block there defensively by Wari Suarez and Tilt as the ball goes out for a Middlesbrough throwing here. Still all a slow. Two shots, two on target. Wow, come on, boys. Let's really get on and do something here. As you can see, we're having a lot of our attacks um, are going through the middle here. Uh, that's the hole with Kaputska, like I say, having that key in, in behind the striker to cause the problems. Anton free kick forward here now. Nearly caught everyone out and went behind the last man. Wari Suarez has been caught here. Just said in. Oh, he tried to chip the keeper. And luckily, Ben Anik was very, very clever to see what he was doing there. That was not a good sign for Wari Suarez. He got completely caught. We'll let him have that. <laughs> We've seen Prochenko do it before as well. I mean, they've got to get used to this division. It's slightly different. Right, anyway, Blackpool are in here now. Oh, Kai Kai tried to get the ball across inside the penalty area. Couldn't do anything with it now. Kane down to Spearing. Kane and Spearing, the midfield two, holding it up. Kane comes back in today because of Virtue's injury. A chance to make a statement. Kaputska coming back here alongside 
Kent's also come in here as the wing backs are looking to overlap and Kaputska finds Karki. Good save by Randolph, parried it across the face. Comes back to Anderton. Kaputska from distance over the crossbar. But still, it is all Blackpool. We are looking head and shoulders, the best team here. Kaputska now up to Herbie Kane. Kent from distance over the crossbar. If we got a few more on target here, we'd be winning this game by a country mile already. Free kick to Middlesbrough now. The quality is the concern. Saville comes forward. Down to Tavern though, he's looked dangerous. A Samba longer. What did I say about quality? You don't give British Samba longer more than one chance. That's all he needs. Blackpool won. Middlesbrough won. His 11th goal of the campaign in spite of them being in the relegation zone in the championship. Tavener here. The attacking free causing problems. It was a decent enough block. And unfortunately, when it falls like that and a Samba longer hits it first time, there's not a lot you can do. It's all square here, but it's a fascinating FA Cup fourth round tie at Bloomfield Road. We got right for us here. Spearing and Kaputska are two in the book. Kane's now gone in the book. I don't like it when the midfield two go in the book because it, it makes the game a little bit more edgy for us. Right, half time. Dressing room. I, I'm actually want. I'm actually not too happy. I'm not happy. I think we should have been two or three up and we've let them back into the game. Um, Spearing is getting a bit funny in the last few games, so let's get him off for Thompson here. Thompson can swap with Kane. I'm going to tell Herbie Kane I want him to calm down a little bit and hope we can get him through a bit later on in the game before we take him off. Kaputsko, I need to calm down as well. I can't afford to lose him off the pitch. Need to watch his step. He seemed to calm down. We'll start the second half now. Middlesbrough get us underway. It is going to be a very tough 45 minutes this my gut is telling me that Middlesbrough are looking more and more confident as the game goes on and as I say that now just stead with a ball in and some of the clearing header but Asomba Longa has got the space again oh his strike's not on target that time and we'll take from being off target with him anyway corner now Blackpool's played in it comes to Kaiki oh and he caught it there was no one in the box so that was a very fascinating um corner that's one of the ones we've adjusted to we kind of drop back a bit more now and then come and interesting it it caused problems as the short corner has against Gillingham which you didn't see but it was in the goal it, uh, in the Gillingham game so hopefully we'll get a short corner in a minute which we can have a look at because it really has made a difference to our corners Anyway, getting back on topic, I think we're going to make another change here with 15 minutes to go. It looks like we might be heading to a replay the way it goes. I don't particularly want a replay, to be frank. Um, I don't think we've got the squad depth at the time to pull it off. We need to make a change. Leko can come on here. I'm going to take off Kaputska as well, actually, I think. I really think I need to rest Kaputska. Should I get Faber on? Oh, there's not a lot of options now for this position. I'm a bit short, actually, here. Um... Kaiki, yeah. Do you know what? Sonny Kaikai Kai is going to have to do the box-to-box -box role, I think, which is not ideal, but we'll go for the... Oh, no. That, do you know what? Let's go for Leleko as the box-to-box -box and Sonny Kaikai. Kai. Yeah. We're sort of moving things around here, just trying to get players playing in their most natural position possible. But anyway, throwing to Blackpool now. Can we win it here? Leleko now comes onto the ball. Devitt across. Kane trying to get the strike away. We're going to demand more here with 10 minutes to go. We don't really want the replay. Turton now trying to get the cross in. Clayton plays it forward. Really just had picks it up on the halfway line. Anderton with the clearing header, but a somber longer again now. We're losing it in the middle. Taverner comes inside. He's dangerous. A somber longer from the strike, and it is 2 1 Middlesbrough. They've turned it on its head the first minute we were so oh it was a complete false dawn wasn't it anyway Tavner comes inside here he's been the danger man for them and a Somba longer with the strike and it gets a hand to it but can't keep it out it's a great finish right with 10 minutes to go here we need a couple of goals now um we don't really want to draw it we don't really want the replay we've got promotion to the championship you're thinking about we want to be playing these guys next season or bearing mind where their season's going waving at them as we go past them five minutes to go here no more changes we can make lecker with a free kick from distance doesn't come on target we'll demand a bit more no we can't i think we're going to sit down and quietly wait as we unfortunately end our fa cup run here with five minutes of added time that's all we got left come on blackpool can we get it forward nothing's happening here nothing happens middlesbrough get the ball now they're gonna hold on to it we've given it a go it's gonna be a home defeat to championship middlesbrough in the fa cup third round Really, we were probably the favourites as well, so we should be disappointed with this. I mean, you look at the player names and you think, it's, you know, it's different league really to us, isn't it? But really, overall, we probably should have done better. Full-time whistle goes, Middlesbrough are through, we are out. We dominated the stats apart from possession. Oh, we injured one of their players, if that's something. Dressing room, uh, not good enough today. Sort of match should have been winning calmly, you know, but it, relatively speaking, in the context of the situation, it's not a league game. So what can you do?
So yeah, we're defeated in the FA Cup fourth round. That is that. Pulis can be proud. Thank you, Mr. Pulis. Sonny Kai Kai's got an injury out for six to nine days. Wari Suarez made his debut. I'm not going to go to the post-match. I'm going to go to the schedule. Right. Where do we go to from here? Now the FA Cup dream is over. And a defeat. Our first defeat since Ipswich in a month. We've had a month without a defeat as Blackpool, which is unbelievable. But I tell you what we'll do. We'll go away now. And then we're going to come back for Accrington Stanley. The reason being... They're in third place. I mean, I want to try have a little bit of a gap in the mid so we get some more games. I think then after that we'll do a gap to Peterborough and move on through the season a bit. But we've got Accrington, and I believe that's also on the same day as Transfer Deadline Day, if I'm not mistaken, which I can't see right here, but I believe it's the 2nd of February this year as well. So we'll have an episode which is Transfer Deadline Day and Accrington Stanley in League One, first versus third, 64 points versus 55. What a start to the season. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time in Once Upon a Time in Blackpool. Bye-bye.